Hey everyone, Wolflorro here. Today we're discussing Sanguinius' respect for his brother Rogal Dawn, in the depths of the Siege of Terror. Spoiler warning to begin, as the events we're discussing today are from the Horus Heresy Siege of Terror novel, The End and the Death, Volume 1, by author Dan Abnett. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first, without spoilers, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Now, there have been times throughout the heresy where we've been able to witness fleeting moments of the brotherly friendships amongst the Primarchs. Most often flashbacks to the days of the Great Crusade, a time when true conflict between them seemed ridiculous, a time when it was just competitive fire and spirit amongst them, a time when they were just brothers. However, there have been times too amid the heresy where more somber reunions have taken place where, just for a moment, we've been able to see the ghost of the past echo across the Primarch's faces, as they've finally reunited with a brother. No better example than one of my favourite moments of all, at Vulcan's return to Terra. His reunion with Rogal Dawn. The almost guilty joy and relief both brothers feel at just being in the presence of one of their siblings, amid all the insanity and grief of the galaxy. And of course, Vulcan aside, perhaps the one Primarch who's always made a point of stating his happiness at reuniting with a brother is Sanguinius, the Angel. Despite whatever calamity that's currently befalling them, you can just tell he makes a point of letting his brothers know he is happy to be back in their presence again. And it's one of the simple qualities that surely helps to make Sanguinius so loved by the Primarchs. For sure, most of them don't know how to react in kind, but you can just tell it means a lot to them. And there's a moment in particular within the depths of the Siege of Terror that eclipses all others. Just a small moment in the grander scheme of things, but one truly profound. A moment where Sanguinius makes a point of ensuring Rogal knows of his respect and admiration. But before we get to the moment I want to focus on, there's an earlier sign of it too within the novel Echoes of Eternity by Aaron Dembski bowden As the forces of the Warmaster press ever closer to the Eternity Gate, as defeat looks to be inevitable, Rogal, who has been commanding the siege from Bab Bastion, receives communication from Sanguinius, and he knows it's not going to be good news. There's been no word or sign from Gilliman and the others, it's all drawing closer to the inevitable end. Quite simply, there's nothing more Rogal can do. And even though Rogal has been beyond vital to the defenders, single-handedly the reason they've held out for as long as they have, it's clear he's unable to appreciate or even recognise his own efforts for what they've been when it's been Jagatai and Sanguinius out there, on the front lines, when Jagatai has given his life to defeat Mortarion, and Sanguinius is the very symbol of defiance, the rallying cry for all the defenders remaining. And it's clear, even across the Hololith, as the two brothers speak to each other, through everything going on, Sanguinius notices that within Rogal, as his mighty formality finally breaks, and he simply tells Sanguinius, I gave you as long as I could. Many Primarchs most likely wouldn't notice the revelation in those words, 
taking them on face value. Matter of fact. But Sanguinius does. And the reply of the angel is really quite poignant. You of all have no need to say such things. No soul has done more. And this isn't one general speaking to another. This isn't just the Primarch recognising another's effort. As Rogel himself correctly realises in that moment, Sanguinius is speaking out of love for his brother. He does not speak so out of humility, Dawn realised. He speaks out of a brother's love. And of course, Rogel doesn't know how to react. The stoicism and formality ingrained into his very nature. His being. Uncomfortable when confronted by something outside of those parameters. Yet the words mean a lot to him. A fleeting few seconds of kinship. Comfort even, with his brother. Separated by miles of carnage slaughter and death. And the fact that Sanguinius found it important to say that then, despite it all, when there is so much more he needed to worry about, says a lot about him. About the man he was. The Primarch. Summed up perfectly by how Sanguinius would then end their conversation. Telling Rogal that... If we do not meet again in the flesh, know that it was an honour being your brother. He doesn't say fighting alongside you. He doesn't say having you as my commander. A fellow general. None of it. Because that's not what matters. He says it was an honour being your brother. Nothing more, nothing less. And I can guarantee you no compliment or praise Rogel was ever given meant more to him than that remark from Sanguinius in that moment. Because for all the Primarch's faults, for all their demigod abilities, being a brother means so much more than just the Primarch. It means so much more than the commander Rogel is, the general the warrior, the fighter. It means the man, the person, the human he is. It means everything in totality. That is Rogel Dawn. And it's a moving, absolutely fantastic moment. With Sanguinius simply giving a knowing smile, with Rogel unable to find the words to reply. Giving a simple nod. The angel managing a smile, and quite possibly the final farewell, at the sight of his brother, just being his brother, Rogel being Rogel. One of the most understated moments of the siege, and by far and away one of the most impactful. Yet, as we know, the angel and the Praetorian would meet again, in the final moments of the siege as the Emperor prepared to board the Vengeful Spirit, the particular moment I wanted to focus on today. And this took place within the End and the Death Volume 1, by Dan Abnett, as Sanguinius and Dawn entered the throne room itself. Dawn sees what has drawn his beloved brother's attention. The High Company of the Imperial Armoury has entered ahead of them, and their procession is beginning its slow, dignified advance along the six kilometres of the nave. Then it is upon us, says Rogel Dawn, his voice barely audible. Neither he nor Sanguinius have ever become used to this chamber, no matter the number of times they have come here. It triggers vertigo, acrophobia, agoraphobia, and canophobia. Despite the numinous and pervasive light, it inspires a fear of darkness too. It is the only place in creation where such feelings manifest for them. The endless space seems to whisper to them of their mortality. 
as though every stone and tile and column is intent on reminding them of their insignificance. But that's not what Dawn feels today. His voice and heart are stilled by the sight of his father's weapons, brought through in honour. The gathering crowd around them stirs, both fearful and elated. Dawn glances at Sanguinius. There is joy and sadness in both of them. Joy, sadness, and infinite fatigue. This is what they had hoped for, and also what they had dreaded. Is the drawing in of the great armors a sign they have failed in their duties, requiring their father to finish what they could not? Or is it a sign of their success, that they have held the line beyond all expectation, long enough for this moment to become possible? Simply that it is happening is enough. They look to the sentinels. You are admitted, lords, says one. The brothers sheath their blades. Are we instructed to approach? Asks Dawn. At once. Dawn turns, but Sanguinius catches his arm and stops him. For a second, they stand shoulder to shoulder. Eye to eye. You've performed the most extraordinary feat, Sanguinius says unexpectedly. Please remember that. Dawn is taken aback by the frankness of the comment, and the innocent sincerity with which it is expressed. His startled half-smile wavers with imprisoned emotion. A flash of light at the high-slit window of an otherwise impregnable keep. A mere fraction of your deeds, brother, he replies awkwardly. You closed the gate. You locked. Sanguinius shakes his head. I was a warrior, Rogel. Just a warrior. You were the one who mattered. He embraces the Praetorian, the spontaneous impulse of a child. As with his guileless comment, the embrace is unexpected and unselfconscious. A rare display of emotion, especially in such a gathering. For a moment, Dawn freezes. Then he completes the embrace. When they step back, a single teardrop glints on the brightest one's pauldron, where the Praetorian rested his head. And a single drop of blood gleams on the Praetorian's backplate, where Sanguinius pressed his hand. Even here, when the darkness is at its zenith, we find our moment of light. This is it, the end, as far as the Primarchs are concerned. A time, as it said, they have feared and dreaded, yet also hoped for in a way. The Emperor leaving the throne. Dawn glances at Sanguinius. There is joy and sadness in both of them. Joy, sadness, and infinite fatigue. This is what they hoped for, and also what they have dreaded. A complete and utter mixture and confusion of emotion. And why shouldn't there be? I mean, this is the literal end of the world they're living through. The end of existence, maybe. They've already seen and been through more than they could ever have comprehended. More than they should ever have had to. And upon the cusp of this final roll of the dice, this final action and rally against the dark, again, Sanguinius takes the time to recognize his brother's sacrifice. To get him to know he mattered. Dawn turns, but Sanguinius catches his arm and stops him. For a second, they stand shoulder to shoulder. Eye to eye, you've performed the most extraordinary feat, Sanguinius says unexpectedly. Please remember that. The fact that Sanguinius is literally dying here, the wounds from his duel with Angron unable to heal, the fact that is with Sanguinius knowing he is going towards his death regardless at the hands of Horus Lupercal, 
It makes that statement of, please remember that, so powerful. That he wants Rogel to realise what he has done, how important he has been. Almost as if he has foreseen the guilt and grief Rogel would put himself through in the Harris's aftermath. Which of course he could well have, but I don't think he had to. Because quite simply, Sanguinius knows his brother. He knows and sees for himself the toll it has taken. How much this burden has broken Rogel. For all we talk of Sanguinius' great sacrifice, honestly, Rogel's is one that deserves just, if not more, recognition. It won't. It doesn't. Because Rogel lives. But it was a beyond, monumental, godlike effort. And in knowing that this is quite possibly his end, if not the end of it all, Sanguinius just pulls his brother into a hug. He embraces the Praetorian, the spontaneous impulse of a child. As with his guileless comment, the embrace is unexpected and unselfconscious. A rare display of emotion, especially in such a gathering. For a moment, Dawn freezes. Then he completes the embrace. At the possible end of the world, what else is there left to do? Again, this is a brother showing his love for a brother. And vice versa. And that speck of blood left by Sanguinius, that teardrop left by Rogel, not only a sign of the trials they've been through throughout the siege, but an eerie mirror of what was to come. The death of Sanguinius at the hands of Horus, and the grief of Rogel in the Heresy's aftermath. When you take into account the entirety of their stories, the entirety of the Heresy, this is a beyond perfect moment. A respect felt by the Primarchs, and the love felt by the brothers. Ah, so good. So good. Honestly, with Malkador ascending the throne in this as well, I have to say Volume 1 of The End and the Death may just be my favourite Siege instalment. It's hard to name just one, of course, but this one is definitely up there. And this moment between Rogel and Sanguinius is a definite reason why. The farewell between the Angel and the Praetorian. A moment where, despite everything, despite the weight of the moment and everything else, they can just take a second to be brothers. But as always, everyone, what do you think? Is this the ultimate show of respect from Sanguinius to Rogel? Is this about a perfecter moment as you could get between the Primarchs at the end of it all? The perfect farewell. Is this the perfect example of why Sanguinius was so loved? Is the blood speck and teardrop the perfect mirror of what they've been through? Or of what's to come? Will this just compound Rogel's grief in the aftermath with the fall of the angel alongside their father? And do we need to see more interaction between the two set back within the days of the Great Crusade? As always, everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers. Your support truly means a lot to me. It really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off. And I'll see you all again real soon.